What's up, y'all? How's it going? Yagamir, back to you with another Dark Souls episode. So yesterday, I was saying that I am a bit worried that I cannot see Grey Rat, and I want to go back to Lothric and make certain that I have rescued him, which is kind of absurd because I've already done that before, haven't I? I mean, I've rescued him on my first ever play of Dark Souls 3. It would be kind of dumb to actually forgot rescuing him in this particular playthrough, which is like my fourth or fifth time playing Dark Souls. That would be embarrassing. But hey, since we are embarrassing ourselves, well, let's go. There's another thing I'm noticing. I have no clue why on earth... Um, OBS is not recording my gameplay at 60 frames per second uh, when I'm playing Dark Souls 3. Oh, it's son of a... It should have been because everything is pristine here. Everything is working as intended. The game is smooth 60 frames. Uh, I see the recording, it's doing great and everything. But after the fact, after I am... Um, editing and finish processing the video, uh, excuse me for the uh, loud noise, I probably edit it out uh, anyway, um, it makes no sense to me that I still do not get 60 FPS. Ow, I'm here man, where are you attacking? I was going for the backstab obviously, goodbye. Now that's where our we go in right now because I got the key for it. But what I want to see is... No way. Is he still caged? Or am I missing the entire place? Um, I should be able to see him from here, but no, I do not. Well, let's keep exploring. Yep, he's no longer here. I was not wrong. Good. So I've probably sent him on a quest that he should pop out later on when I get back to Firelink. I thought after killing the sages, he would be back. But not really, he's not. Anyway, well let's go deal with the wraith. Although, what he is going to give me, it's going to be of little concern to me because I'm not going to be doing invasions as a red phantom. But, nevertheless, it's a wraith, it gives a lot of souls, and there's a chance of getting his sword, which used to be, or is still good in PvP. Another aspect of this game I am not doing. Anyway. It's time for sneaky sneaky attacks. Here we go. As you can see, he's uh, not a pushover. He is not a pushover at all. You should be wary of that attack. And as you can see, his attacks are destroying my stamina. The good news is, I have at least... Oh, I was certain that was a... Damn. I was def definitely certain that was a backstab. Alright. Alright, okay. It's alright. Patience is key. There we go. And we got the Red Eye Orb. Now, like I said, the Red Eye Orb is an invasion item. Let me go check it quickly. So, it's an online play item. I'm glad they do this because they will tell you and warn you that this is a play item, an online play item, as I adjust my microphone. Sorry about that, guys. Um, invade other worlds at will. Defeat the host of embers of the world 
you have invaded to gain the strength of fire. The red eye orb is rooted in a tiny land swallowed by darkness long ago. Some choose to put the orb to other uses, to embark on this path, enter the service of Rosaria in the Cathedral of the Deep. That is something I am not going to do definitely. <laughs> uh, way of the White. Anyway, that done. Time to go back to the Shrine Bonfire. First, let me go check things out at the Shrine Bonfire and see if Grey Ratty is back. If not, I will just teleport back where we were and head for the Deacons of the Deep. I call them the Beacons of the Deep. Oh, there he is. I knew it. I knew it that he'd be back. Oh, hey sooner or later. You've come at a good time. I do? Oh, it took some prowling, but I finally made a score. Go. Thank you. Give me your score now. And yes, he finally did indeed. Now, this is one of those things that I want to use in this gameplay. Or in this playthrough in particular. Oh, my good old Sway Hunter. This is the basic weapon that I've used for my entire first playthrough of Dark Lord Souls World. Well, not just me, many of us did, because this used to be a powerful, powerful weapon. That staggered everything and anything in its path. What else do you have for me? Uh, we've got the knight stuff. Yeah, this is the armor that I'm not a big fan of. We've got the knight armor, the one that we started with, and the assassin's armor. Cool. Anyway, you can keep the ring as Goodbye and stay safe. I would, man. I will. So, let's first reinforce the Estus. Thank you. Give call. Oh my. This call is from the Undead Legion. You is indeed the weapons of Farron's Abyss Watchers. A fine prize. I'm honored to be endued with it. Now I'll be equipped to infuse special gems. Praise the gods, eh? Time to put this brawn to use. <laughs> no repair equipment, not there, not ready. Uh, should I reinforce again? No, I only had one. I want to reinforce a weapon. And let's start with this. Hmm. I don't have that much uh, reinforcing materials, but I can infuse it. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of infusing, no, infuse, there we go. Can I not infuse it? Really? Alright then. What's this? It's a great machete. Oh yeah. Really? <laughs> I was like, what? A great machete? Is this, you know, the giant machete? But I've never got into the giant. Or I've never been to the giant before. I was afraid for a second. <laughs> Which I shouldn't be, to be honest. Pretty anyway. Be careful. That said, it's time to equip this. It's a lovely, lovely sword that I should two-hand it. And I'm thinking since I would be two-handing more than anything, maybe I should use this shield. It gives me more stamina recovery. Since I'm gonna use it like that, it makes sense, doesn't it? That said, 10k, huh? Well, it's leveling up time. Again, endurance. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. I'm really tempted to go and just take points from Mr. Hollow right here, but... Yeah. Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should. It's three points. Who cares? 
Who cares if I become a hollow or not? There we go. Be safe, champion of Ash. If I end up screwing his quest, it doesn't matter to me. But let's hope I won't. Hmm. Let's talk to this fella. Since I got the red eye. See what he's gonna say to me. Ah, you found a proper red eye. I did indeed. I knew you were no ordinary man. Now in kind of Ah, goodbye. His quest is not going to be advanced until I join the Covenant of Rosaria. So, which I am not going to join that Covenant because if I do, the mistress right there that we find sitting at the stairs right next to me or ahead of me is not going to be a friendly anymore. And I like her quest. A tomb, storage, burn and dead. No, we all set. We are all set. So go to the Crystal Sage place and continue to the Cathedral of the Deep. I think it's the Cathedral. I think, oh yeah, 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 I, I, I remember. The place should be called the Cathedral of the Deep and the enemy, the boss mob, are called the Deacons of the Deep. I will we'll discover that lately or shortly. I always got confused by that path, which is blocked by rocks, obviously, and there's nothing you can do there. And I always went there first and found myself blocked. Goodbye. Ooh, Twinkling Titanite. This should be Twinkling Titanite too. Twinkling? Oh, yes. And there is a, uh, a bit of uh, an enemy problem here. As you can see, one of them is patrolling, one of them is waiting, and the evangelist here. So, if I am impatient, I'll probably go and try to stab the evangelist. And that guy is going to be aggroed, and he's going to attack me, making my progress slower. And if he does, this guy eventually is going to come back to me, and I will have three tough enemies ahead of me. That is a big problem. Now I forgot what button... There you go. Ah, this is alright. This is alright. Reset the fight. Thank you for doing that. I think this weapon has bleed, if I'm not mistakes. mistaken mistakes. Goodbye. Alright. Well, that was a bit of a... ...messy fight. But we did not anger the evangelist. Which is extremely good for me, because... Ooh, I almost, I almost fell. She's a bit of a toughie. She is a toughie, and her with one of these fellas would have been probably a very tough fight, and would have probably killed me. Anyway, let's try and backstab her. Hey, there's a fire here. Let's play around the fire. Come on. There you go. There's a fire here. I know you like the fire. Come and attack me. There you go. Oh, that's a... Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot. It's two swings. Damn. Like I said, she's not uh, easy. I'm just being dumb. I could have just attacked like this. Well, never she does that. She always reminds me of Bloodborne. Really does remind me of Bloodborne. I don't know, for some reason... Excuse me, again. Uh, for some reason, 
this type of enemy always reminds me of Bloodborne and I always feel like as I get the Herald set feel like this enemy should belong more to Bloodborne uh, because there's a lot of churches in Bloodborne and Blood Administration and all those lovely things that we had when we were playing I mean this entire area kinda resembles Bloodborne to be honest so yeah yeah I really love it. Bloodborne is my all-time favorite. It's an amazing game. And I still want to properly play it. I played it twice as we find our enemy who's wearing the same armor as we are. I played it twice and twice I could not finish it. Ow. As a, this is a human kind of type NPC so expect the fight to be tough. Ow. Oh yeah, I forgot that I had that. We should probably go to even platform so that we can fight normally. There we have it. Watch my stamina. Ow. That's a powerful staggered attack. Now, to be honest, I'm tackling this fight wrong. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm trying to parry. Which is going to go horribly wrong, isn't it? Nice. Oh, try to break my shield, aren't you? Nah, to be honest, I'd rather man two-handed. It's much better. Top my health off as I take a knife to the face. And yeah, of course he dodges it. Why would he not? dodge this attack. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, it's just an NPC and he's not going to be reading my attacks and dodging them and stuff. Although I'm certain they could have made it harder as an AI. As you can see, this is a big looking item. It's probably an important item and it is the Paladin's Ashes which is going to unlock further stuff from the Maiden, which is good for us. Anyway, as we explore the place and try to make certain there is nothing that we have missed, we're going to find immediately a second NPC. And this one is a familiar one too. We've seen him before in uh, in Dark Souls 1, mainly. Ow, I should have dodged that. Now since this guy is kind of a tank type of enemy, he decides to try and tank through my attacks, which goes horribly wrong for him. Now this is a bit of a tricky area because there's going to be dogs, there's going to be archers. So mainly dogs die first. And as you can see, try to deal with the dogs and you get rained upon with these arrows. And they are fiery arrows too, which they will make certain that will stagger you and stun you for a bit, as you can see. Ah, good news I got that one. As the dog is trying to come and find me. Okay, as one dog. They have this small ravine or raven, whatever you want to call it, to kind of try and fight your way through, like so. Which I've never used to be honest, so let's just use it this time. 
it's really good as you can see it's nice you can dodge many things and you just basically go through most of the enemies <laughs> Dumb. Ow. There we go. I can cheese that. And since there's only you... Oh no, there's a second one, I forgot. I can do this, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Now oh, this is a lovely area. Really nicely designed, with the woods and everything. This guy is a maniac, a suicide maniac. He's gonna be doing this and killing himself. So you can either rush and kill him, or you can just wait for him to die. Oh yes, it's indeed Cathedral of the Deep. Now if I did things correctly, which I'm certain I didn't, I should be able to find Siegvert here stranded here which i did not undoubtedly but the good news is we haven't advanced anything yet so i can find him i just need to trigger some other things in order to find him i think mainly i need to find patches that's the main thing i need to do oh this is the dlc Mother of the forlorn, who have no place to call their own. Please bear witness to our resolve. Fire for Ariandel. Fire for Ariandel. And the ash to kindle flame. <gasps> It's funny, when I first saw this NPC, when we got the Ashes of Ariandel DLC, I never paid any heed to this guy. I never thought, in a million years, I never thought that this guy is going to be one of the most important characters in the entirety of the Dark Souls universe. Gale is his name. And Gale is gonna play a crucial, crucial role in the upcoming events in this Dark Souls story. So it's kinda, now that I've finished the entirety of the DLC, and I'm talking about Ashes of Ariandel and the Ring City, especially the Ring City, looking back at him like this, it's kinda reminiscent and airy at the same time. Now you see him as a normal man, kneeling, you think it's a frail character, he's really nothing, it's just an NPC. But he will be coming back and forth, he will be summoned as a form of an NPC, and you'll take no heed of him, until the day you see his true colours. Now then, then you will start thinking, damn, so all these years not it's hundreds of years this guy was always here and actually this guy is as old as the dark souls universe you think it's new no no he's not new he's been here since forever he's one of the originals you know after getting through his story anyway so let's uh rest for a bit and as you can see these two doors are shortcuts to the Cathedral of the Deep, that I will unlock one by one, time after time, as I progress through the story. Hmm, I should definitely, definitely check what I need to do in order to um, progress to seek that story. I do not want to mess up the story. I did mess it up the first time, obviously. It's a bit of a convoluted story, to be honest. Have I bought a torch? That's the question. 
do I? Oh, yes, I did, of course. The torch is going to be a key component in this particular area because there's a hidden mechanic for the torch. Other than just, you know, light in the way. And the hidden mechanic is that these type of enemies and the enemies, the cadavers that we'll find up there will inflict us with parasites. Parasites that will have a bleed effect. And as you can see, you will have a meter going up and up and up. And once this meter gets filled to the brim, an explosion is going to happen and a lot of we will we'll lose a lot of our HP. So the best we uh, you can see the worms like the leeches attached to my body. And the best way to deal with this is with fire, of course. So you bring the torch out and it immediately takes care of it. The other solution is consuming one of the bleed cancelling items. But you don't have a lot of these. And they are consumable, so they are probably much more important for other aspects of the game. But, yeah. Make certain to buy a torch as soon as you can. And it's available from the beginning of the game. So you can take it. Now, I usually go all the way in that small corridor over there. And then do a circle and then come to here. But you know what, let's do things differently. It's a kind of a dead end circle, like it just for this lizard and some other enemies uh, up there, that's it. And that small crystal lizard there, that's it. Take advantage. It really doesn't really make much of a problem to go out. I did not expect him to attack like that. I guess I forgot his attacks. Dude, serious. Oh, that I remember. Again. Now, this time I should probably uh, attack him and stab him. Now, here's the other problem. He procced the smaller lizard and now that small lizard has probably disappeared. Not really. Hmm. Now, there's definitely two of them, if I remember correctly. There's two of them. So, if I reload this area, I'll find the second one. Plenty of Titanite Shard, which is good for me. Means another upgrade for this weapon. Oh, one more other thing. These enemies are extremely vulnerable to fire attacks. So if you have a fire infused weapon... Make certain to use it. Like you see, they're easy easy once you know how to use this weapon i think this is where we find the saint tree bell vine this is one of the key items that i will be using for the build which is good which is really good why it's a chime obviously and it's used for miracles Sacred Chime for Casting Miracles of the Gods. A bell vine cut from a small saint tree that has been meticulously tended to. Saint tree bell vines are customary in the far north and allow for faster casting than ordinary sacred chimes. Gentle Prayer restores HP for a period of time, albeit extremely slowly works while equipped in either hand. Now see, this 
is the biggest reason why this is good. See, this is a more contribution to the theme of the build, which is getting HP back slowly. Obviously, I cannot equip it now because I do not have enough stats for it. I need 18 in faith, which I will do shortly, undoubtedly. I need to farm for it a bit, which I will do off camera. And we got the Seistus, which is also good. Perseverance, cross arms in front of the body to temporarily boost poise damage and reduced while activated. Seistus is uh, one of those things too that I should be equipping. But right now I do not have that much uh, weight on me, so equipping more of these things is probably gonna be problematic for me. I can probably do it like this. But yeah, the Seistus kind of increases my poise a bit, which is good. Anyway. Now that this entire area is done, that concludes... Holy shit! Already 31 minutes? I did nothing! Come on time, play with me! 31 minutes, I was just like... <laughs> oh yeah, time flies by. That goes... Undoubtedly, time flies by. So nevertheless, this is going to be concluding our today's episode. Uh, we arrived at the Deacons of the Deep, which is great. And we are going to have a lot of... Not a lot of trouble, to be honest. A lot of fun. Because I do like scary zombie, you know, ish games. And this place has a lot of zombies to offer. So yeah, you'll see. In the next episode, we're gonna arrive shortly, or oh, the poison bite, great ring, at a cemetery. We're filled with undead that will not cease to come back. No matter how much you kill, they will be back sooner or later. And that's amazing, to be honest. So. When I arrived there for the first time, I did not know about the torch mechanic, I did not know about many things, and it was a challenging area for me, and I died quite a bit there, which is amazing. So this has been Yagami, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you are with me here, and thank you for watching my videos. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, you know how the deal goes, and I will see you tomorrow. So bye-bye.